Uh, so uh, this work, uh, this work focuses on large scale uh, action classification in uh, settings that uh, the videos have been captured in uh, uh, uncontrolled settings. Uh, the main challenge is that when uh, we are uh, actually observing these videos, we can see that within an action class, uh, instances vary very uh, uh, differently. On the other hand, distinct action classes appear as similar. As uh, you can see, uh, all of these sample instances include a person uh, who is biking, but they have been labeled with different action classes. Another challenge is that actions are captured from arbitrary viewpoints and distances, and also the videos show various uh, non-action related uh, motions in a video. We may even see multiple different viewpoint changes in a single instance of a video. <coughs> Recent approaches use uh, deep convolutional neural networks uh, with a temporal pooling or a recurrent uh, neural network for action classification. The advantages of these approaches are that they are uh, able of uh, feature. They are able to learn the features in an end-to-end -end way for action classification, and uh, the, these features are uh, transferable to the other domains, and they are easily scalable. Also, to the due to the feed-forward architecture, these are usually uh, fast in inference. Uh, the current uh, the current uh, trend in action classification. Uh, include various strategies to uh, make the models more deeper or add more training data. Uh, the, deeper, uh, the, deep, the deeper models usually uh, uh, achieved by adding more layers or uh, adding more hidden units. However, making deep models deeper typically uh, require more hand-tuning of the hyperparameters. And because of the huger parameter space, they require more training data to be able to uh, have a good, robust learning. Unfortunately, in some domains, we do not have access to such huge training data. Our key idea is to start with a standard network. And uh, instead of augmenting uh, with additional training data or making the model more complex, we would like to augment with augment the existing training uh, data from videos with another modality, which can bring more information, more complementary information, and help the network learn uh, better and provide better accuracy. As I will show in the uh, results section, this addition of a small amount of training data from another modality actually help improving the accuracy. Uh, studies in cognitive science have shown that people can learn uh, complex concepts from uh, cartoonic and uh, abstract concepts instead of actually learning from uh, realistic training videos and images during training. This is a well-known phenomenon in cognitive science. Uh, the 3D skeleton can be uh, one of those abstractions can help action classification. Motivated by findings in cognitive science, our main hypothesis is that human skeletons will improve our accuracy by providing complementary information. So this is a bad Binton uh, kind of uh, game. As you can see, the uh, information that we can get from the 3D human skeleton is much more informative compared to the video itself. 3D human skeletons uh, usually model the interdependencies of body joints, and they have been studied uh, uh, thoroughly in computer vision. Unfortunately, 3D human skeletons uh, are captured in control lab settings. So the, uh, the, the number of actions covered from uh, uh, 3D human data is not as good as we have in the real video settings. It's also hard to obtain 3D human skeleton for outdoor scenes. And uh, besides this, more importantly, 3D skeleton data is not available at test time for videos that we see. To overcome this limitation, our approach uses 3D human skeletons only in training. We use a multimodal framework architecture that consists of two different models, one for videos, one for 3D human skeletons. The framework ensures that both of these models are being learned in a unified way. Specifically, the model learned on 3D skeleton sequences uh, is used to regularize the learning of the video model. Uh, it's important to note that since 
as I said uh, in uh, test time, we do not have access to 3D skeleton data. At test time, we only use the regularized video model. More specifically, we first train an encoder LSTM, which maps a 3D human skeleton to a fixed lens representation. Giving instances of 3D human skeleton data, we can form a feature space. And these different points uh, show different instances of the same class. These features, uh, actually, this feature space is then used to regularize our uh, video model, which is a two-layer LSTM which is operating on videos. And its goal is to classify the action class correctly and encode the video to a representation which is closer to this feature space that we have learned. And this multimodal learning type of work is uh, 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 very close to the transfer learning. The number of training instances in 3D human skeletons are not enough to be able to learn a supervised model based on the action classes. Instead, we use the standard uh, encoder-decoder architecture to learn an encoder LSTM. Given a sequence of 3D human skeletons, we use a uh, two-layer LSTM to encode the 3D human skeleton sequence to a fixed lens representation. This fixed lens representation is then used by a decoder LSTM to regenerate and reconstruct the treated skeletons in a reverse order. Note that the encoder LSTM is only used to regularize the learning uh, for the video model. Uh, to learn the video model, we define a classification loss and a similarity constraints. So while the uh, cross-entropy loss provides feedbacks about how well we were able to classify actions, uh, the similarity constraint indicate how well the internal representation that we obtain from those 2D videos are compared to the 3D sequence models that we have learned. We define two sets of constraints, uh, which is class independent and uh, class aware, and I'm going to talk about them later. Uh, there are several ways to include constraints uh, in uh, the opt optimization problem. One way is to use a weighted sum or to use Lagrange multipliers. Unfortunately, gradient descent is, uh, poor, uh, is very poor in terms of uh, optimizing such a formulation. We use an alternative uh, approach called hybrid gradient descent, uh, which in practice shows better results compared to the other methods that we have tested on. The basic idea behind the hybrid gradient descent is to update the model with respect to the gradient of the loss function, which is the cross-entropy loss, if uh, all, of the all of the constraints are satisfied. Otherwise, it will update the parameters with respect to the average gradient of the violated constraints. So we uh, modify the backpropagation through time in learning by this hybrid gradient descent method. As you can see in this figure, uh, the goal is uh, to actually optimize with respect to the x direction. Uh, we have trained, we have uh, improved results on three benchmark data sets. Sports 1M is the largest available data set for action classification, and we were able to improve the accuracy uh, by 3.3%. On uh, two other data sets, which is UCF 101 and HMDB 51, we were able to improve uh, even more because the overlap of the action classes are much more in terms of uh, uh, the overlap between the 3D skeleton data. Uh, in our results, we find that for action classes that are directly uh, uh, about human motion, we improve accuracy as we expected. So you can see that here, one interesting observation is that while we do not have explicitly uh, old biking classes in our, I mean, these biking labels in our data set for 3D human skeleton, we were still able to improve the accuracy. Unfortunately, for some action classes, that are not directly about human motion, such as uh, windsurfing, we have a drop in accuracy. So this means that for, the, uh, for those actions that do not have the human motion kind of patterns in the videos, it was hard for us to capture that information from the 3D human skeleton data. Uh, we also tested uh, various uh, training strat settings. Our results show that improvement is not just because of the additional of 
uh, data, uh, the amount of data that we are adding, it's really because of the uh, different modality of the data that we are using in this. Because when, you, uh, when we tested with the same amount of data subtracted from the actual training video, we didn't get as much as improvement as we wanted. To summarize, uh, we use 3D sequence data to represent the dynamics of human actions. Uh, to do that, we use another LSTM uh, to generate a semantic feature space from uh, 3D sequences. This re the resulting sequence model is used to regularize a video model. Uh, we introduce the hybrid backpropagation through time, uh, which is based on the hybrid gradient descent method. And uh, we show that complementary 3D data can actually help uh, in improving of the accuracy. Uh, for more details about the network parameters and the uh, exact training of this uh, hybrid backpropagation through time, you're welcome to visit our poster at the poster session. Thank you very much.